Hey, Captain Mike from Forbes Fishing, and I'm here with Dave Smith of Stonehard Marina. We are at the AC show. We are on a beautiful Pursuit 358. Uh, Dave, why don't you take us through this uh, beautiful boat? You got it, Mike. So, as Mike said, this is the uh, S358 Pursuit. Um, we got length overalls, 37 feet 4 inches, um, holds 343 gallons of fuel, and 11 4 feet, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's the right. Anyway, um, so starting up here at the bow, really nice finished uh, anchor locker compartment. Nice, you know, heavy duty lid here, all compression latches, stainless steel Beautifully gas shops. finished. Beautifully finished underneath. Yep. So. Um, nicely finished inside. Is there a here. light in there? Yep. So you have a courtesy <laughs> light, and then Holy you God. have raw water wash down and fresh water wash down, which is just quick connects. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll, you know, the hoses will come with the boat, so you don't have to go out and buy anything extra, of course. Mm -hmm. You have a hookup here for um, a uh, an automatic windlass remote, so that you can control the windlass from here. So it plugs in here, and then the remote stores in here. Um, that comes with the boat; it's just not installed because the boat's brand new. Um, and then you know, obviously, a big uh, stainless steel. No, that's a Calvin. Uh, you know, it's this polished stainless steel uh, big plow anchor in there. But you know, everything nicely routed and just a just a really clean install, which is kind of what the pursuit does with just about everything. Yeah, it's beautiful down here. It's beautiful. Um, while we're up here, just, you know, simple, but pop-up cleats all around the boat, mm -hmm. obviously, stainless steel. Um, we got some rod holders up here in the bow. I see snaps, it must be a bow cover. So, bow cover on this boat, which is standard, so it's big cover, actually. It's going to go, you know, obviously all the way all around where the snaps are, covering this seat, pretty Good. much everything from this cushion forward, so that when the boat's, you know, at the dock or on the lift, wherever it is, everything's going to stay nice and clean and not get fried by the sun. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful uh, social area up here. Yeah, really, really nice seating. So everything's nice and plush, really thick, comfortable cushions, um, bolsters all the way around. And you do have backrests that are mechanical. So it's a switch right here. So you hit the switch. And it will extend so that you can you know, sit like any other wow. like bow. You don't have to worry about storing anything. I mean, yeah, it just, just folds away. And all it is actually, it's just it's a trip tab. You throw it as a trip tab. And they bolt a cushion to it. Pretty simple. It's nice because you can sit here and. Yeah, it's got a little cushion to it, too. The, yeah, uh, the, so the hydraulics of the trim tab. You don't right? have to worry about taking it and throwing it in the head compartment or anything like that. That's a yeah. very cool design. Yeah, you have stereo control up here as well. So, JL audio stereo all throughout the boat, but you have a second head unit up on here. You're going to have one of these at the helm also. Okay. Um, USB output, uh, uh, inputs here, and then a 12 foot, uh, 12 volt accessory. That's very cool. I'm uh, told I'm asked all the time when my guests are up here, like turn the music down, turn it up, or you know. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely change the channel for that. Um, change the channel. So also you have a really nice feature, which I, a lot of the newer boats are starting to do with the pursuit. Um, the cockpit table goes flush to the floor, mm. um, or at the touch of the switch, obviously it will come up and you can put it at the same level as the rest of the cushions here, or you can raise it all the way up as I'm doing now and uh, use it as a table. Put out some, uh, some cocktails and some snacks and have a good time. Yeah, I have one on my boat and uh, I, I love how they fold flat. Yeah. You know, because there's there's sometimes it's a party and sometimes but for me most of the times it's fishing. So I like to pan. I like it to be there but I can't have it in the way. Yeah, it's just a pain in the neck if you gotta you know, it's just one of those things you gotta take apart and stow away somewhere. Yep. It definitely makes it a lot easier. Yeah, you can get the idea. Um, forward facing seating here on the front of the console. here and just you know a nice big comfortable seat here so you can sit in it you know it goes up nice and high so when someone's sitting here you know they're comfortable and they feel secure inside and you're seat. close enough to that table to where it's usable for you yeah oh absolutely and the other thing i have to point out even on this is the 358 mic but 
even on some of the smaller boats like the 288 and the 328 for example you're nice and you're deep inside the bow on this boat you're not you know it doesn't feel like you're it's too shallow and i know on a lot of other boats um it feels like you know you're almost it's just too shallow or there could be a risk of you getting tossed out of the boat in the wrong condition so i no. always like to point that out uh people can't see this but i'm, I'm leaning against the uh gunnel here and it's actually up against my butt yeah i mean there's yeah, yeah, you got, I mean, I don't even know what the measurement is, but you got, you got two, three feet, at least three and a half, four feet of gunnel height up here. I don't know if this will come out. Okay, it's, it's definitely very high sides. Uh, working your way back here on both sides, my port and starboard, you got um, in the gunnel rod storage here. And then, uh, you know, this is, I believe they use this for uh, fender storage. Oh, yeah, yeah. And or dock lines, you have spots to hang under here. Um, but walk the back, you have, you'll notice you have a, a window here just to let some natural light into the cabin that we're going to go into in a little bit here. Yeah. That's... Um, just nice, just, if you don't want to have the lights on or whatever, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice just not to be all closed in by, by just fiberglass. Definitely. Windshields, nice and you know you don't have any big pillars that are going to obstruct uh, obstruct your you know your view when you're on the boat. So I remember speaking to the engineers of Pursuit and they said they specifically really tried to get this shape here as small as possible, so you had the least amount of obstruction when you're running the boat. Yeah, I mean most most modern cars have more yeah, right. structure here on this. Pillar. Yeah, they did a nice job making it nice and thin. It just it's it, it's nice when you're running when it's in you know, an ideal condition. Like yep. It's a night or in the fog. Absolutely. So I guess step up helm. Yeah. So step up helm here. And so not only do you have the step up helm, but then if you are uh, of the shorter persuasion and you have a little trouble seeing over the helm here, this whole step will drop down and Very nice. have another, you know, I don't know, whatever that is, you're, eight you're inches or so. I'm like six one. Yeah, you're. I, that's too. I'm too tall for it. But you know, there's plenty of guys that are in that yep. like five 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 six whatever. Uh, I, a lot of people actually um, always really really react very well to this because they're uh, a little shorter and they yeah, have trouble seeing over the, over the bow Not, and you don't have any really big issues with bow rise but sometimes the helm's a little bit taller because you have the cabin down below so they they, uh, they give you that extra step and it doubles as when it's folded up it's also a step so whoever's sitting at the helm yeah. lean their feet on it so dave i'm i'm holding the camera approximately my eye level right now i'm six foot tall um I have great visibility over the helm uh -huh. and over the bow of the boat. I mean, uh, and you get you know minimal bow rise when getting up on plane on this boat. Um, really, really, they they did a really good job designing the hull on this boat. It runs extremely well. Dude, this console is gorgeous. Yeah, they did a nice job here. So up on top, instead of having just traditional you know hard fiberglass with a you know color gel coat, they did uh, this softer material. Um, it's a darker color, so you don't get as much glare. Um, then you have just a little storage box here with a wireless charger for your phone and USB ports to charge. And I believe you have your Garmin. Oh, what is that? Yeah, that's card. Yeah. Card. yeah, it's your Garmin card reader uh, for your two MFDs here that are at the helm. So twin 8616 Garmin MFDs, um, and you'll have. A, uh, a Phantom 54 uh, four-foot open ray radar on the top, and then a uh, an Airmore B175 medium chirp through-hole transducer um, going through the hull there, um, and that is an optional uh, electronics package. But okay. Pursuit installs it, and anything that is a Garmin product that's installed by Pursuit at the factory, um, you'll get an additional year of warranty on it. So instead of the standard two years that Garmin Garmin provides. Anything that's installed by Pursuit um, at the Pursuit factory that's a Garmin product, you'll get an additional year, so a total of three years. Which, yeah, which that's is a lot. Of all this stuff's expensive to replace if it ever does go bad. Uh, so it's nice having that peace of mind. Hey, Dave, what? Is this an air conditioning vent? Yes, sir. So you have <laughs> on this boat, you have a standard, um, standard uh, diesel, it's a five kW genset. Um, so you can run air conditioning and heat. 
yeah. both while you're at the dock. Obviously, you've hooked up to shore power, but you can also run it um, when you're out, you know, either fishing or cruising with your family. As long as the generator's running, you can have AC and or heat running um, both down in the cabin and up here uh, at the helm. So you got two vents up here, and then you got a bunch more down below. Uh, All right, this goes out there. to my fishing buddies. Uh, suck it up. You don't need heat during striper season. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is nice. Uh, it would be that, nice. It is nice. It would um, be nice. All your switches to control pretty much all your systems on the boat here. Um, you know, backlit here. You have you know all your your nav lights, wash down pumps, um, bilge pumps. Just you know, you have a, a, another windlass control here. And then down below, obviously, like I said earlier, you're gonna have another um, stereo head unit, a JL Audio. Media Master, and that's the uh, Yamaha EX uh, so autopilot. This is there? The, uh, yeah, this is the Yamaha Hellmaster EX autopilot. Mm -hmm. So these are where they mount your autopilot controls. Hellmaster EX controls, just your binnacle, and then your uh, your joystick with your set point. Um, you know your set point, fish point, stay point, drift point, as well as even if the boat does get a Yamaha joystick, which a lot of other manufacturers, if the boat gets a joystick, no bow thruster. Everything with Pursuit 32 feet and up, you're going to st get a standard uh, Lumar bow thruster, which is nice. It's absolutely, is it necessary? Probably not, but I'll tell you what, it's, I'd rather have it than not have it. Yeah. Sure, you know, helps out a lot in those windy days. Optional spotlight control right here. Um, so if you do get the spotlight, control box goes here, and then you get an ACR LED uh, spotlight mounted on the hard top there if you decide to do so. Got everything else here. Fire system. What's this hatch uh, under your feet? So this is for your. You got it. This is where your air conditioning system twist. Counterclockwise. So okay, that's my question. So you have a few things down here. Your sea keeper. Yeah. Which is uh, an optional piece of equipment, but this boat is equipped with it. And honestly, you know, most boats this size these days that are new at this price point, somebody's gonna, you know, most people are gonna want to see keeper in it. So that's the way we brought this one in. Um, and Dave, this is this is probably dead center of the boat. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which has got to be the most optimal place to put it. Yeah, you, you see so many that are in the so cockpit. So many that are all the way in the back, and I don't, you know, I feel like that that happens when the boat wasn't designed around it. Yep. So they this boat's you know new 2023 might have been the first year I believe for it. So this boat was designed around, you know, have the idea of having a sea keeper. So they made sure uh, you know the engineers made sure that they put put in the best possible position. And this is a DC sea keeper, which is yes, why sir. we see so, the battery. Yeah, this is a sea keeper too. Everything the sea keeper three and down are all 12 volt DC systems. So no generator is necessary. However, this boat does have a generator anyway to power the air conditioning and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But um, you do not need to run the generator to run this Sea Keeper. Um, if you're going to be running it or basically spooling it up, um, you would I would suggest running the engines and or the generator just because mm -hmm. otherwise they use they use a lot of power when they spool up. But once it's actually spooled up and running, I I've, I've never tested it myself personally, but I think you can keep the engines and the generator off for, for a decent amount of time um, and, and not have to worry about the batteries dying. Yeah, I've heard people say um, uh, spin them up when you're still on shore power too. Yeah, if you, it, when you're on shore power or if you're mm -hmm. on the generator, I usually, as soon as I hop on the boat in the morning or whatever it is when I'm going out, that's one of the first things I turn on after I turn the batteries on. But down here, you also got your uh, hot water heater and then uh, just battery chargers and whatnot back here, your isolator. Um, and then just some duck work down here. You can see that's the uh, HVAC run down to the cabin. But everything, you know, I like to point out, Pursuit does a really, really nice job with the way that they, you know, run all their cables and, and, and wires and everything. Everything is extremely, you know, well yeah. labeled. And, you know, it's, it's not like you're just guessing it. No, it's very neat here. Uh, it looks like it'd be very easy to maintain. Yeah. Absolutely. So down here in the cabin, Mike, you have, you're actually standing right where there's a, uh, a bed, but it, it, it'll convert into a bed, I should say. So there's another two cushions that'll pop in there and convert that whole space there into a bed. Um, when it's not being used as a bed, obviously, you can use it as kind of a uh, hangout spot, if you, if you like to call it that. Um, there's a microwave up there up top, runs off the generator, two storage cabinets. 
you know, you got 32 inch TV, maybe a 24 inch uh, television. Very nice. And then it's nice. You have some, like I was explaining while we were outside earlier, you have some sun shades to either block or let in some natural light from outside. Yeah. And Very nice. then some more storage cabinets down below here. And your um, your your, uh, your your AC panel is down below here, so you can start stop your generator um, control. I believe your HVAC, your your heating and air conditioning can get controlled down there, and then you'll turn on any of your uh, your AC systems there as well. And nice thing on this boat, it's a 35 foot boat, but so this is a separate cabin, and then you have a full separate stand up head in there, which is. Uh, you know, not super common on a 35 foot boat. No. Really nice. Boy, this is a, a luxury to say the it least. It's, it's nice being, you know, having the, the separate head with the closed door. I'm not sure if this come out on the video. I'm uh, I'm six foot, like I mentioned before, and I've got uh, several inches around probably like four inches, maybe even five. Oh, there we go. Probably good five inches. You know, porcelain toilet, sink, mirror. And uh, you do have a shower in there also. It's a wet head, mm -hmm. so it doesn't separate, but it's for a 35 foot boat. Yeah, that's special in this size boat. Absolutely special. And so easy to get in and out of uh, with yeah, this. Yeah, it's a regular cabin door. It's not like you're having to go in through the side of the, the side of the console or anything. Yep. It's a regular, you know, sliding cabin door that they use on a lot of the bigger models. So you have a regular cabin door yeah. here. That's just this is just an acrylic door that'll mm -hmm. lock and close. It's tinted. And that's about it from here. Oh, I forgot nice. to mention earlier, you do have a, oh, a nice so vent up here too. And uh, a windshield wiper, wiper. Boat, as well as a windshield wiper. Yeah, you got a definitely a rain X that son of a gun and uh, I'm pop a, that vent open. I'm a Sunday. big fan. I mean, uh, wherever. Whenever we're fishing in rough waters, you always take a lot of splashing, uh, you know, no matter what size boat you have. Yeah, you gotta, gotta have a wiper or at least yep. you know, some kind of rain or something. Um, uh, this is neat, they put uh, channels in for your wings. So uh, yeah, part of the uh, the T-top uh, does have uh, tracks in there so that mm -hmm. you can, you know, retrofit the boat with uh, with wings. Now this boat came with the option for the wings, so this will come no matter what, mm -hmm. but if you opt for the uh, enclosure option, it'll come with these uh, these other tracks here that you can see one here and then go back. Yeah, it looks like we have a three so, uh, so you can, you know, kind of close this mm -hmm. whole thing in like a phone booth or, you know, a large phone booth, if you will. Well, these, these grab handles on the side of the uh, hardtop are nice. Well, it's nice. You, you can hold on to something walking all the way down the boat. From all the way in the bow, you got this grab rail here, and another one here, and then you got something on top here, so you can, you know, make sure you're feeling sturdy while you're walking back, while you're on the boat. The grab rails, uh, what I really like about the grab rails on the gunnel here, they're recessed into the gunnel. Yeah, nice clean look. So that when I'm walking up here, I'm not bouncing my hip up against yeah, uh, like a metal like bar. Protruding out. Yeah. Yeah, the recessed out. Yeah, real nice job there. Um, I don't know if I pointed out earlier, Mike, just the, the triple helm seat set up across, you know, at, at, at your controls. And triple helm seat with armrest for so the center all seat. All armrest, all with bolsters, of course. The, um, uh, the two outer seats are stationary. The center seat for the captain and captain seat um, will go up and down and forward and backwards. Some footrests over here for your passengers. Yeah, very cool. Um, and that. optional outriggers up top here in the hardtop. These are the mm -hmm. Taco Grand Slam 390s. And you, we can control tilt and... So you can control the... You can control, you know, swing them in and out from inside the boat. Mm -hmm. And then you can also control your, the, height. the height of them. So, you know, going under bridges and stuff like that. Very nice. Super, super easy. You don't have to hang on the side of the gun or anything like that. Yeah. A little more safe. Um, Wish mine did that. So, coming back here, you have, I'm going to get to the hard top real quick, but I'll show you, they, they do a really, Pursuit in general does a super nice job with their seating. So, all, this is their new style seating. Wow. So, flip out, and 
it's super nice because this whole thing flips up and I mean the seat is it's the number one, it's a functional seat, but it comes all the way up to, you know, my shoulder well, pretty much. They stay in that position. I, I think one thing that's important, they got the angle right. Yeah. You're leaning back. If we were under power right now, and you were more upright, you'd feel like you you're about to fall gonna, out. Yeah, this seat is You know, but you're, you're leaning back pretty much. Kind of, yeah, pushing me more mm -hmm. in, so I can do exactly like you said. If you're wondering why, it doesn't feel like you're going to get pushed out at all. Um, so you have this three-quarter seat, if you will, and then you have another smaller one here. If you want just a single, you can do both or just one or the other. But I did want to show, so in the hard top, it's nice. You can get up, there's a patch up here. So if you need to get to your VHF antennas, your um, anchor light or anything like that to fold them down, you don't have to climb on the side of the boat. They thought it out ahead of time and they put a hatch in so you can just pop up here, fold them down, and you're, you know, you're not hanging off the side of the boat. Yeah, very thoughtful. So with these guys folded up, you have a nice uh, grill prep station back here. So, uh -huh. electric grill over here. Now, on a lot of boats, this is an option. Is that uh, an option? Optional on here. Yeah, okay. Optional on here. So, you do not have to get the grill with the generator. The grill option is, you know, in, in yeah. comparison to the price of the boat, the, the grill option isn't a whole lot of money. So, most times, mm -hmm. people will just put the grill on there because they can, you know, you can use it at some point. And then you have a sink here, mm -hmm. and then just an insulated drink box down here. So, you can fill it up with ice, put, you know, drinks, sodas, whatever you're, whatever you're drinking that mm -hmm. day. And just they do a nice job on all their all their lids and super super heavy, but they use all friction hinges. It just everything's put together. Is it magnet? Yep. So something's plastered into the other side. Of yeah, the right on here. Yep. So you can't you can't see it. It's yeah, it, very clean. My buddy Steve Tallow is gonna like that. Hope he um, watches this video. So coming back here, actually, you have your boarding door. Um, on the starboard side of the boat here. Okay, so pulled guy, in, yep. just like we'd want it to. So we can pull up oh, on, a, on a dock. The boat, there's one of those magnets right here that just keeps the, keeps the door yep. in position. And then you have, this is uh, mount for a boarding ladder, yep. which I'll show you in a minute, which is down in the mechanical space. But super easy getting it on and off the boat from the dock instead of having to walk. Dave, I like that they put uh, cushions on the door too, because mm -hmm. uh, you see some of these where... I have seen some where, yeah, there's nothing there, and yeah. It kind of hurts your leg. Yeah, well, sometimes you might be fishing there. Um, yep. In addition to the rod storage we talked about earlier up in the bow, on the gunnel, we also have some rod storage back here as well. Mm -hmm. um, fire extinguishers mounted right underneath the gunnel on the... Nice on and close. Side, on both sides, actually. Um, Everybody always asks what this is for. This is just a pad, so when you're, you know, because you're sticking your rods and reels in here, the reels are going to be resting against here mm -hmm. instead of scratching sure. and hitting up against the, uh, the harder fiberglass there. And it's on snap, so I could take it I off and it wash off, behind clean. it. Yep, absolutely. Very thoughtful. Um, fish box is port and starter here. So these guys open up, and they are uh, hooked up to uh, diaphragm pumps, so they're not macerated. Um, Macerator pumps they don't use just because if you're throwing weights or lures or anything like that, macerator pump could get jammed up. They have a diaphragm pump and it'll just suck everything out. Dave, I've swapped my boat out all to diaphragm pumps because the macerators were just so unreliable. They yeah. uh, they all Especially froze up. Fish, you, know, I, you know, more and more of the boats I'm seeing switching over to diaphragm pumps right from the factory. Yeah, I think I they think just get less callbacks, less more problems. Expensive. Uh, initially, but it's a little bit long time. That's yeah, right. they work. Uh, fresh as well, water wash downs back here also. Mm -hmm. So, same thing like I showed you up in the anchor locker. You're going to have quick disconnects here for whatever you need for fishing or anything like that. Yeah. So, integrated into uh, the big oversized hard top, you have a uh, make fast electric um, automatic sunshade here so just one touch operation so you just touch the button touch the switch at the helm once it'll come all the way out to just about here you know that entire width um, and so Dave can you leave that open when you're underway at so reasonable speeds or for what's a make fast you're not supposed to okay However, then I don't have, do it <laughs> well I don't do it <laughs> right, slow slow speeds I don't think you're really doing you know hurting anything but 
you know, I wouldn't suggest running at anything more than, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour max. Um, you know what, everybody? If, if you're moving, if you're moving ten feet over, you could probably leave it open. But uh, yeah, right. Yeah. It, would, it, if you're getting up on plane, maybe you should put it, it in. It's an expensive piece of equipment, so it's not worth you know risking damaging it. No, um, definitely not. Up above your uh, the, the sunshade here, you got um, the uh, bomb rack here on the mm -hmm. hard top that is through bolted on there. Um, they, they, it's, this is just like attention to detail stuff that, that I always point out. So. There's only a few other manufacturers that do stuff like this, but you say you have powder coating here, and this stuff is all just anodized aluminum. Yep. Um, just a lot of other brands will do powder coating through the whole entire rod holder. It's easier, and yeah, it's just it's cheaper. And when you go to put your rod back in, you know, first thing you're gonna do, in very short order at least, you're gonna chip this, and then yep. once you chip the powder coating, it's game over. Yep. So Salt gets in there and holds up the right way, and you know, tape it off and yep. don't very nice job. powder coat this stuff here. Um, okay. Back down to the cockpit here. So I'm going to open this up. The mechanical yep. hatch right here. Just wanted to point this out. So this is actually the um, you, you'll screw the uh, the table leg into this, which is down below in here. So open up the mechanical access hatch. So your table legs right here, and then your fiberglass cockpit table is right Whoa, behind it. So we could socialize in the back of yep, the boat. So too. that'll screw right in here, and then you can open up both of these seats here. You have your Remember, I pointed out when I opened up the uh, the boarding door. There's the boarding ladder is right on the back side of that table. Yep. So everything, right you know, has a dedicated spot right there. Um, anchor. If you, yep. You have a uh, stern anchor. That's nice. Anchor anchor, um, also included. Yeah, you don't need. Uh, you don't want to drag out your big one if you're just backing into the sandbar. Right? Yeah, no, no, and it's it's a nice lightweight one. Mm -hmm. um, a few water separators down there, down below. Um, something I like to point out with all the pursuits. Sea strainers too. Yep. Wow. So you'll have, well, and that's going to be for your, your generator. Um, and yeah, you need clean water to cool that, and right? your air conditioning unit. Um, so that's your, your diesel Fisher Panda set up there. Everything's very easy to get to. Super set. easy and accessible, and everything is vertically mounted. So you don't have pumps or, you know, any other kind of hardware mounted on the on the floor there or on the bottom. Yeah, everything's mounted on the side there. Yeah, I love it how everything's labeled. AC Everything pump. is extremely, you know, as I was saying earlier when we were back up, up by the helm in that one uh, in that one hatch there. It's, Port know, it's and starboard really, uh, fuel water separator. Not a lot of guessing. And there's a lot yeah. of stuff that looks similar down here, so you don't know if it's the generator uh, mm -hmm. strainer or the air conditioning strainer. Um, a bunch of, you know, through whole seacocks back there that are all labeled. Sorry, I spent most of my career in IT, and we would have these uh, cable chases in the server rooms. I never saw one on a boat before, but it it's nice. It keeps it nice and clean. Yeah, they do a really nice job with their wiring. If you ever get a chance to go to the factory, I suggest you do. It's pretty, pretty remarkable. In the distance, I could see uh, two bilge pumps and a transducer. Yep, yep. Water witch, um, water witch digital float switches and, uh, and two, uh, two bilge pumps back. And we have a collection of batteries back here too. Yeah. So your nice, you know, raised mm -hmm. battery tray. Of, yeah. You know, not, not in the water at all. No, definitely. Wow. Yeah, they lay they lay it out real nice. God, look at the underside of this. It's just as nice as the top. Yeah, and they do. So all all and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. All your uh, lids are going to be gasketed, and they actually they do the gaskets on the underside of the uh, lid so that just protects if, them. Instead, well, instead of putting the gaskets down on the deck yeah. side of it, anytime you're putting stuff in and out of boxes, you, you, tear can, you know you're going to tear them. It's a lot more you know just the longevity is a lot better when they're on the underside of the lid here. These are all lockable, by the way, all these T-handles. So you get a special key with the boat, and you can lock any of those mm -hmm. compartments. Um, something I really like on this boat that they did was your flushes for your engines. You get a special fitting with the boat. Mm -hmm. I just saw it somewhere earlier. I don't know where I saw it, but it's a special, just a little blue fitting. Twists in here, and then you just screw a hose onto it, and you have your... Board, board engine flush and your starboard engine flush. It's not automatic, it's just you don't no. have to go pulling back by the engine. You just It's right here and it's already plumbed through the rigging tubes back here. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. I actually uh, made that for my boat. I made it with a uh, yeah. brass switch. Yeah, it's so like, it's just one connector. I can't imagine that's that expensive. No. They do, and it just makes life so much easier, especially having to bend down back there. And you know what, Dave? At the back of, in the back of the Yamaha motors, there's a splice. 
where you yeah. separate, you don't even have to cut the hose. So they actually already, you know, the engineers at Yamaha yeah, figured ahead. you're going to do that anyway. Guys, yeah. Sure. Um, I don't know if I flipped this open yet, but same thing as the rear facing seat or that facing seat. This is just a forward facing version. Same thing with the big. Wow. You know, flip up backrest here that goes all the way up. I love the articulating backrest. Everything's covered on that. Like yeah. when you when you shut that back up, we're gonna see and we saw it already, but it's like everything's you're yeah, not gonna get fish blood or hooks on those cushions. Some other some other manufacturers that you know they do their their, their seats, they flip down and then the whole seat's exposed here. That's crazy. You Can know, you imagine I mean, a fish a fish flopping around with hooks in its, it's mouth? Yeah, it's just exposed a lot more than versus this style. Yeah, no, absolutely uh, nicer design. And then this box Ooh, back here opens up. I like up. this. So a nice proportioned off box here, and then you have a cutting board that fits in. For some yeah, it's a nice uh, bait. Yep. You know, leave your bait in there nice and cold and, yeah, and cut it's it up nice right there. Yeah, insulated so it can hold mm -hmm. ice. Um, and then just a fresh water shower back here. Yeah, hot and cold water, which is nice because <laughs> yeah. if you're getting out and you know whatever, it's cold or something like that, you do have it's a regular hot cold water shower. I've taken a shower on my boat, and of course it doesn't have a hot water heater. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't as enjoyable. <laughs> it's invigorating to um, say the least. One last thing, I guess I wanted to point out back here is just walking around the motors back here. Holy it's, it's cow! It's a dance floor. I mean, there's a dance floor back you don't here. Have, right? You really don't have a splash well like traditional outboard boats anymore. Um, you can, you know, you don't have to worry about twisting your ankle through here. This is all flat yep. surface. You can walk pretty, pretty cool all the way around the engines from one side to the other. Yeah, look at that platform. Now, Dave, these are the 425s or the 450s? These are the 450s. Uh, on the website, people can see, you know, the actual spec, you know, very specific specifications yeah, yeah, yeah. of weight and, basic specs, and like fuel burn and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, they have all kinds of performance yep. data for the uh, 425s and the 450s. The 425s are discontinued now, um, but I think they still have the performance data up for it. So, okay. yeah, Pursuit's website is super handy with that stuff. They're just another beautiful boat. I, I wish yes, you and Stone Harbor Marina uh, the best of luck at the boat show this year and, and for you. 2024. How can people reach you? Um, so you can reach me anytime yeah. on my yeah. cell phone or email. I'm just going to put my business card up here. Well, they can see. But yeah. Okay. Anytime, email, text, phone call. Dave Smith of Stone Harbor Yacht Sales in beautiful Stone Harbor, New Jersey. Uh, right around the corner from my hometown in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. Thanks for stopping by, Mike. Dave, thank you for everything. You got it.